I call Porter Williams. A point of order, Ian East Galloway. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Um, speak, uh, Mr. Chairman. We've had a couple of messages uh, from people watching uh, Parliament on television saying that there are some issues with the sound system. I just wonder if you could get the technicians oh, okay. to check that out. Thank you. Um, it's through the microphones, I take it. Um, I'll just ask the, um, the messengers if... Can we, can we thank you very much? I'm calling Porter Williams. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'm just going to take a, um, a short call um, on this because I, I uh, as you would appreciate, um, uh, the um, amendments to the Inland Revenue Act are not my um, strong point. However, I do want to talk about um, the uh, Clause 15, which amends the abatement rate and also the uh, clause putting the base rate for the in-work tax credit. Um, some of the submitters talked, uh, spoke at length about uh, the, um, the in-work tax credit um, and, and it's uh, um, how you know, the inability, in, inability of the in-work tax credit to uh, do anything significant to address the issue of child poverty in New Zealand. Um, and how um, one submitter actually states that the use of the in-work tax credit has, among other things, raised human rights concerns that has necessitated complex adjustments to the tax system. Um, and that they go on to state that uh, consideration should be given to CPAG's recommendation to increase the rate of family tax credit so that all children benefit. And when I look at the, um, the regulatory impact statement on page 31, which sets out the, the table of uh, the impact of the package on housework, household budgets in relation to in-works tax credits, uh, family tax credits, accommodation supplements, childcare assistance and the like. It's obvious that um, this bill is going to have minimal effect on the impacts uh, for uh, those families, on, on actually raising incomes for those families. Because on average, uh, regardless of whether you're receiving a in-work tax credit, uh, you know, if you're working 40 hours of the week and have uh, four children, you're on average going to receive um, an increase in your net household budget of $17.50. In fact, uh, over, across all of this table, regardless whether you're a job seeker, whether you're working 20, um, a couple working 40 hours between you, uh, sole parent um, on sole parent support, the, the rate is, remains around the $17.50 mark per week, except if you have the um, are working between a couple about 60 hours, which means you also get $30.50 for childcare assistance. But I want to qualify that with the statement that's made up above this table, Mr Chairman, in that it states that this table's been presented um, and in all cases the wage rate is assumed to be $15 an hour and the family is based in South Auckland, paying, a, paying close to median rent for suitably sized accommodation. Well, I would have to um, argue, uh, Mr Chair, that in relation to the costs for accommodation in, um, in South Auckland, in particular in Auckland in general, that $17.50 makes very little difference to, in fact, uh, families will find themselves in a, uh, a negative uh, uh, position in relation to the uh, cost of accommodation. So while the, um, the government members have said that this is part of a suite of uh, measures to support uh, children in hardship, there hasn't been anything demonstrated to date that would actually address the significant impact of accommodation costs in families, uh, particularly if we're talking large numbers of families in South Auckland who are purported to be, be, um, to be supported by this bill. Um, that's my contribution. Thank you, Mr Chair. Members, sorry, members, there's a problem with the sound on Parliament TV and the web streaming, and technicians are working on that to resolve this, you know, so thank you for bringing it to my attention. Um, 